Dizoxide is a wonderful drug for management of insulinoma. Now, salicylates, it is not low dose, it is the high dose salicylates which are known to lead to development of hyperuricemia. Never the mitral stenosis uh, lead to development of, actually it should be third heart sound, there is a correction in the question. Third heart sound is never found in mitral stenosis, is what you need to ultimately answer. Now, 30 to 300 milligram per day is basically is the definition of microalbuminuria. Syringomyelia, diabetes, leprosy, all of them leading to the development of Charcot's joints, sensory, sensory joints is well known. <coughs> now tell me doctor, you know bacteria produce pigment, no? Like actinomyces produce yellow sulfur color, staph aureus yellow pigment, which organism produce red pigment? Who will give me the correct answer? It is also called pseudohemoptysis is a name given. If this organism grows in the sputum, I know our online students will crack the answer with a gun. That's good. I was expecting our Gunto students say Serratia marisans is what need to be remembered, which lead to development of red pigment, which is called pseudohemoptysis. If you look at the cephalosporins, they are bactericidal because they break the cell wall. Now. Coming to the various causes of renal failure, TB never kills people doctor, TB leads to morbidity and ultimately kill people. So renal TB is not fatal unlike the other conditions which are much more fatal. Jaundice and acute renal failure, combination where do you find? Leptospirosis what does it lead to? It is called Leptospira icterohemorrhagica. It leads to jaundice, renal failure, just like malaria. So, Wheels disease, gram negative septicemia, they are all the causes of jaundice plus renal failure combination. A process where the raw unconscious wishes and impulses of a dreamer converts into the images acceptable to the superego is basically called what? What is the Sigmund Freud famous for? It is the Sigmund Freud who said, you dream to become a topper, then you become a topper. If you are not getting any dreams of becoming topper and every time you go to sleep you are getting a dream. My number could not be found in spite of 1 lakh ranks are over. If you yourself don't dream to be a great man, how can world can appreciate it? So first thing is to dream ourselves. So doctor, uh, that's all about the dream work of Sigmoid, the Sigmund Freud. Now, <clears throat> a seven year old is having sleepovers because he wets in the bed. Bed wetting is one of the challenges. It is only diagnosed if the person continues to bed wet after five. After fifty year also bed wetting is abnormal, not before that. Unless you are a MD pediatrics mother and the child, you are a strict disciplinarian, unlike uh, a village mother who don't mind if the baby passes urine even at the age of 7 or 8. So as doctor parents we are a failure sometimes because we impose too much on the children and the child in the modern gadgets don't want to study, don't want to slog like you because you didn't have that kind of a rich dad, you ended up to in a medical school and you are studying. Don't expect it from your children. Eh? So doctor. Nocturnal enuresis is a diagnosis after 5 and uh, it usually occurs generally within 30 minutes to 3 hours after the onset of sleep. So that's the reason you put an alarm, wake up the child and then make him to pass urine once more in the middle of the night, then enuresis habit will be gone. Imipramine as suggested by our Buntur doctors is uh, rarely used because of its anticholinergic side effects. A five-year-old child's speech is interrupted by hesitations, repetition of syllables and excessive sound prolongation. What is it called? Stuttering. Stuttering 
usually starts between the age of 2 to 4. It has nothing to do with mental illness. There are top surgeons who had the problem of stuttering. There are top physicians, of course. Physician and stuttering is little difficult because physician's job is not performing. Talking only. If the patient dies also, you should talk as a physician. It's a wonderful death, sir. He died very peacefully. While dying, he told, my son, children are all very good. So that ultimately, you must convince the children about the, their father's death. So that is the job of a physician, right? So stuttering physician will have definitely a lot of troubles. Even to tell good news, you may end up in uh, uh, giving a different impression. So doctor, uh, it has nothing to do with mental illness. People with stuttering do very well in many fields and domains. Now, what is a very common cause of delirium, especially elderly people? It is all multiple drugs that you are giving. Polypharmacy is the underlying cause. Anti-desmoglein antibodies and pemphigus vulgaris, you won't forget. And in the case of the psoriasis, when will it worsen? It is in the winter, where it will be worsening, not in the summer, where it will basically improve. Then in psoriasis, you find pitting. Onycholysis, oil drop sign, all of them typically you come across. Half and half nails are also called Lindsay snails. And where do you see Lindsay snails, doctor? Typically, a uh, lot of patients who are on hemodialysis, you just walk into the dialysis unit and check their nails. Half and half nails are very common. Now tell me, doctor, which is that organism? which will cleave the snare protein which is important for the release of the neurotransmitter. Which organisms toxin has this kind of a property? All organisms, they are toxins. You must be ready for uh, tomorrow's exam. Who will give me the correct answer? Yes. Which organism will cleave the snare protein? That's right. We get the correct answer from Varangal. One big clamp to our alumni of KMC. It is the botulinum toxin which will cleave even clostridium tetany. They both will cleave the snare protein needed for the neurotransmitter release, tetanospasin, and uh, botulinum toxin, the mechanism of action. 